This story happened to me back when I lived at my parents' house. I was commuting to college at the time and had three siblings that also lived at home, my brother and two sisters. For some context, we lived on five acres in rural Ohio, surrounded on both sides by woods and farm fields. Additionally, during the week, my dad normally left for work at 2 a.m., so I had always felt like it was my job to be the man of the house because he was gone during the times when you would imagine something sketchy happening. However, on this night, because it was the weekend, my dad was home. I woke up to the sound of my brother's voice trying to get my attention. We had separate rooms upstairs, and coming out of our rooms you could look down over the banister and see our front door. When I woke up, it took a few moments to get out of the haze and realize what was going on. I looked at the clock and it was around 2.30 a.m., and my brother told me that there were two men at our front door. Now, this really woke me up. We quietly walked out of my room and peeked over to look down at the front door. When we looked, there was no one at the door, but I noticed my parents off to the side out of view of the glass on the front door. I whispered down to my dad, and he told me there were two guys who had been talking to each other and knocking on the door. Hearing my dad say this freaked me out even more. I went back to my room and grabbed my pistol, quickly shuffling down the stairs after looking to make sure they weren't at the door. If they had been, they would have easily seen me coming down the stairs, as it is in direct view. My brother was right behind me, and as we headed over to where my parents were, whispering to try and find out what was going on. My parents had awoken to the sound of our dog barking, and had come out to find these two men knocking loudly at the door. At this point, the men returned and began knocking again, despite the fact that no one had come to the door and our dog was still actively barking. The fact that they were there at this time in a location where houses are spread out hundreds of yards and still knocking with the dog barking made the situation even more terrifying. After a couple of minutes, the men walked away and we all shuffled across the kitchen into the family room to peek out the windows into our driveway which was lit up by the outside light. There was a black Cadillac sitting there but no one was inside from what we could see. Immediately, the question was, where did these guys go? They weren't in their car and they were no longer at the front door. Unfortunately, we figured out the answer when the handles on our back French door started jiggling. They were actively trying to enter the back of our house, which entered into the kitchen. At this point, I just remember my mother frantically saying, David, to my dad, as pure terror overwhelmed her. Then, two things happened. Adrenaline filled my body as I prepared my handgun, horrified at the very real possibility that I might have to shoot these men. Secondly, my dad finally grabbed the phone, called the police, and calmly told them what was happening. Thankfully, after a minute of jiggling, they stopped at the back door and disappeared again, only to return to their knocking at the front. However, at this point, several minutes had gone by and suddenly we saw the local police fly up in multiple cruisers with their lights on. As they whipped into our driveway and front yard, the two men bolted away, attempting to run the long way around. As they whipped into our driveway and front yard, the two men bolted away, attempting to run the long way around the house across the driveway. One of them disappeared out of our view, but the other one was intercepted by an officer, yelling for him to get on the ground. He didn't, and he was immediately tased. Some of the officers went around the house after the other guy, and one of them came back to talk to my dad as we came out the front. They ended up finding the other man hiding in my sister's little playhouse in the backyard. It appeared both of them were drunk or high, as the one who hid had cocaine on him. While they were both arrested that night, we never did find out what they were charged with or what happened to them. Needless to say, the whole experience wasn't fun. So random men at our door in the middle of the night. Let's not meet again. So this was about two years ago. I live in a townhouse in a pretty suburban area. There are three fields surrounding the area I live in. I was home alone and it was pretty late at night. My mother and a boyfriend were up north for the weekend. I was making some food when I heard strange noises banging on the walls. I brushed it off because I have noisy neighbours, but I was really paranoid, so I texted my neighbour and asked if they were home. They weren't. I started really freaking out. I was home alone, my neighbours weren't in, 
and it was two in the morning. The banging noises got louder. It sounded like it was from my basement. Maybe it was my washer or something, I thought, and I calmed down a little. I went in the basement, like some stupid person in a horror movie, to see if it was just my laundry, and it turned out that it wasn't. I left the basement quickly, panic rushing back to me. I went to my room and totally forgot about my food, and sat on my bed. I ended up lying down. Now, for a little bit of information, I have the master bedroom in my house, and inside there are two closets. One is a walk-in, and one is like a regular closet. My walk-in closet has a light, but the light barely works. Now, out of the corner of my eye, I saw the light in my closet was on. Again, like a dumb person from a horror movie, I opened my closet, and the light shut off. I could barely make it out, but a tall, skinny figure was standing in the very back of my closet. I closed the door really fast and felt like screaming, but I didn't. I ended up going outside for a while and sat on a bench outside my house. I don't really know if I was just seeing things or if I really saw something paranormal. My childhood best friend, Mary and I, were around 11 or 12 years old at the time. Mary's family had their own campsite in a provincial park about two hours from our hometown and would spend the entire summer each year living in their camper out there. This particular summer, I was able to go and stay with them for a week, and we were excited to spend our time adventuring around the forest. On the last night I was there, we decided we wanted to hurry down to the ice cream shop by the lake before it closed. It was early evening at this point, still pretty bright out, but beginning to lose light. The path we took was down a short slope right next to the main road with maybe about 10 feet of thick brush and trees in between. On the other side was the forest with more tall thick brush. So we were walking along, not seeing a single other person on the path in front or behind us. We hear a sudden rustling and snapping of branches, similar to the sound of maybe a deer moving through the woods. I wouldn't have thought anything of it, but then the sound of running footsteps followed. Mary glanced back and suddenly grabbed my arm, urging me under her breath not to look back. At the same time, the running stops. I don't know why I didn't ignore her and get a look myself. I guess I could sense the very real fear in her voice and chose to listen. We both started to panic, getting that feeling that when you're running up the stairs after turning the basement light off. We picked up speed as much as we could without breaking into a sprint, knowing the ice cream shop was only about a minute walk away at this point. The path soon broke and we were in the parking lot. Suddenly, Mary steered me hard to the left, heading towards the lake and the boat rental, instead of continuing straight to the ice cream shop, and I went along with it silently, understanding that ice cream was no longer an interest right now. Mary was clearly panicking at this point. We were both looking around, but it seemed that whatever scared her was nowhere in sight at this point. Mary walked up to the boat rental and got us a kayak. We climbed in. We began to paddle out in the middle of the lake. As we paddled, she told me that there was a man behind us, and the man had stopped running to us very abruptly upon making eye contact with her. He had been wearing a long black coat with a hood up, despite it being in the middle of July, and had a terrible smirk on his face. She swore that as he stopped running, she saw him put something shiny away in his coat. He appeared to have just emerged out of the bushes after we walked past, given the sounds we heard right before we came running onto the path. We reached the center of the lake and stopped paddling. I pulled out my Nokia brick phone that my parents had, thank God, given me, just in case. I handed it to Mary and told her to call her parents to come pick us up. As the phone rang, I saw her look out past me to the shore and go pale, lifting a hand to point to what she was seeing. I turned, and there was the man, stalking his way around the path that circled the edge of the lake, staring out at us. We sat in the middle of the lake and watched him do two full laps, never looking away from us, before finally disappearing. It took a few tries to get a hold of her family, and we were freaking out so bad the whole time as the sun got lower and lower. 
We did manage to have someone come back with a truck, but by the time we reached the shore, it was pretty dark outside. I don't know what we would have done if we hadn't been able to call for a ride. Looking back, I don't know why we didn't just go up to the ice cream shop, inform an adult there, and ask her parents to come get us then, but it worked out. We got back safe, and we thankfully never saw the man again. Hey guys, thanks for listening. If you want to hear more scary stories, please subscribe, and I'll keep them coming. Until next time.